everybody. Welcome back. Um, today we're outside because obviously it's a pandemic and being inside sometimes you get those crazy cabin fever doldrums and being outside on a nice sunny day even though it's January it's about mid, mid 40s I believe. Um, it's just nice to get out and just dress appropriately. Uh, enjoy the view. What I wanted to talk about today was, um, this is going to be a bonsai video, uh, so what we're going to talk about today is going out and collecting, or yamadori as it's called, but if you wanted to go out and collect any sort of trees, you number one want to get permission if it's not your property. Always get permission. I will never say just walk on property and dig stuff up and steal it or take it. You always want to get permission from where you're at. Um, I have enough land that I can walk around and just pick up, you know, and look around. Um, but there is something else besides digging them up that you can do. And that's called, which I call scouting. I mean, you can go out in the middle of winter, get some fresh air, number one, and get out of the house, take somebody with you, go for a walk. Uh, you can, if you really want to be proactive, you can bring a pair of pruners with you. You can bring some ribbon if you want to tag a tree and go back to it later. Um, or dig it up if you have permission. And other than that, I mean, just getting out of the house is a great way to just get some fresh air and not sit in the house and watch TV all day and, and go through everything in Netflix. Um, but I'm going to walk around up here. There's a hill behind me. We're going to walk up there and we're going to look around and I'm just going to show you what I look for uh, in preparation to dig something up or just dig it up now. Uh, mostly what I do is I look at things and realize if they're worth it and if they're not, I can leave it where it is, undisturbed, or I can prune it, leave it, see how it grows back, revisit it again, and decide whether I want to dig it up. So I don't have to kill it, I could just leave it and maybe let it grow out in the ground, thicken, grow more branches, and then take it if I chose. But you still can dig them up, again, if you have permission. So we're going to go walk around and we're going to go up the hill behind me and see what we can find. So here we go. We're going to walk up the hill and we're just going to look for things that possibly could be either dug up or just leave. Let's take a look. It is a rather nice day. I mean, starting off, we have some uh, arborvitaes that are kind of left and really not looking so good. But, I mean, if you really wanted to get in there... You can look inside and possibly see that there is a really, really nice trunk on these if we can get it to grow back some growth to the lower branches. But we're going to leave it. Here we have a, uh, I believe this is either a pitch pine or a five needle. Not sure, but look at the, the nice structure on that. What a nice looking little tree to probably dig up at some point and really, you know, utilize. And then we just walk around. There's some more nice five needles. Actually, I kind of think these are pitch. These are pitch pine. I think it's Pinus virginiensis, if I'm not mistaken. These pines, I believe, are placed, they were decorate, decorative trees that were planted here. That's definitely a five needle. There's another little one that, um, if I can get it, let me get in on it here, broke off at the top, but the bottom's still growing. So you could dig this up and, you know, grow it on and use it. There's also, I think these are oaks. See, what's happening is in the wintertime, you really can't identify it unless you know, unless you really know what it is. But these, I believe, are oaks. And up here in these hills, a lot of these trees are alders or oaks i live in an area where the oil the soil is very acidic very sandy another little one that looks like it broke off this right here is a tough one to use it's a mountain laurel very pretty when it's blooming other than that it's very very scraggly they put a lot of their leaves toward the end of the branches so you don't get a really thick full lush looking plant especially when they're wild there's another one another pine 
lot of pines. Look on the hill, there's a lot of oaks, pines. That's pretty much what's gonna be around here. And we even have some stones that are here too, if you guys like viewing stones. And I think what's growing in here is pretty neat. There's a little, nice little fern that grows in there. I don't even know what it is. I just call it a nice little fern, a happy fern. Some more large rocks. Let's see what else we can find here. I'm sure we can find more stuff. Big pines. All right, so we're back again. I'm um, sorry I stopped the video, but here's another pine that looks like somebody smashed it or got hit with a, uh, a branch that came out of the tree right next to it during one of the storms, which did lead it to kind of have some nice structure. I mean, we actually look at it. I mean, I like this down here. Take off this top, and then you would have something that kind of grows up and over and has all this little bushy growth here. Now, I could snip this off now and let it grow with that, but you know, would it really be worth it to, to destroy or disturb it right now? Maybe. Another one. Now this one, I think at some point in time, I think this was cut. I think I cut this a while ago because I was cutting some saplings that were growing in this little patch of woods up here. And what I was trying to do was just kind of get them to grow out on their own and maybe kind of have a better structure. But mostly what's up here is these pines. There have been a few other trees. I think this is a, this is an alder of some sort. Or no, it's a dead pine. <laughs> Go figure. Nice stumps. Hmm, I wonder what else we could find around here. Here's an interesting one. We got a pine with some, if you look, it's got some dead wood growing on it. And you go up and it has this nice long taper. I mean, with something like this, that it fell over and was smashed, it actually has a back growth back here on this branch. And it has a really nice trunk on it. Under the leaves. But let me move that out of the way. There we go, right there. Now, as you can see how big it is compared to my finger. But you could dig that up and certainly do something with it. I think we also have a patch of, you know, I think these are wild blueberries or huckleberries or something. I mean, it's hard to tell without the, without the leaves, but they grow all over the place here. These could be forest plantings if you wanted to make a mini forest. And again, as I said, if you really wanted to do something while you were there, you just take this and let's just, for example's sake, you wanted to make it shorter. So you would take this and just lop it off and then come back and see how it back buds and how it grows. And if you choose to just leave it, just leave it. And that way you don't have to dig it up. It'll grow out for you in maybe a year's time when you do choose to take it it will be ready for you, or at least up to your liking. Now, that was just a little bit of what I like to do when, you know, you get out of the house and you can really look around and you could really just get out more or less to get fresh air, get some sanity, but also be productive too in the hobby. So that's just one thing. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. I know it wasn't very exciting and hopefully the second half of the video will be more exciting. So we are back in the grow room. Uh, what we're gonna do today, I'll pan around just to show you some stuff that's all blooming, stuff that's crazy looking. Um, we're going to work on him. This is a uh, dwarf Schifflera. Schif I think it's Schifflera arbricola. This is an air layering of this. I found this plant in the trash next to a big dumpster. I guess somebody bought it and decided they didn't want it. Cleaned it up, brought it home, and uh, got it growing, and I air layered it. And you could see the air layer cut right there. But you could see where it actually grew root. It grew one root, and that root thickened over time. But it never grew any other roots beside that. Oh, maybe it did, I didn't see these. But I wanna get this into a pot and try to hide some of that mess until it throws out some roots. Also, 
when I do this, I also want to defoliate it, which I'm not going to show you as I do it. I'm just going to kind of give you a basis on what it what I mean by it. Um, basically, take a pair of shears, nice and clean, and you don't want to cut this down here, which is the petiole. You don't want to cut th like this, because if you can see here, there's a new leaf trying to grow. If you cut the petiole off, you'll it, it just won't grow from that dormant eye. So you either a won't get a branch or b a leaf. So what you want to do is you want to come up here and just cut that off. If I cut it completely. Um, so basically what you're going to do for a Schaeffler is you're going to go around and just leave all the petioles on. Take all the leaves off. Get an idea of what you're looking for is all the structure inside. You want to see every branch, where it's going, where it's pointing. If you want to keep it, if you want to clip and grow and have it grown in a completely different direction. Or you want to wire it, which with these I don't recommend because they're brittle. The inside's very pithy and it snaps off like a piece of celery. But the outside does get a, like a woody crust on it. <laughs> I guess that's a good word for it. Nice woody crust. Um, so what I want to do is I want to get it out, clean the roots off, rake them out, get them to something more radial, and then I want to put it in one of my friend Steve's pots. Uh, as you know, I love the way he makes his pots. He's very economical with the pricing of these pots. And I'll tell you what, man, he, he really he does a good job. And they're made of stoneware, so they'll handle cold. And they're heavy, so things that are top heavy won't fall over. Also, the pots that like this, you can use these for orchids, so you because they're they'll uh, they'll breathe a little bit. Um, beside that, I want to get this into a pot of Steve's. Um, you can also find him on Facebook as Bonsai Seeker. You can check out his uh, his site or check out his profile. Usually, he has once a week. He'll have a bunch of pots up that he makes. He puts them out for bid. You can typically buy them at that moment if you chose to, or you could just contact him and have something custom made. I'm sure he would do that for you. Anyway, so let's get started. I'm going to basically fast forward to when I'm done defoliating to show you what I mean. All right, so I've completely defoliated it, with exception of some newer growing leaves that I don't feel are a problem because um, they're growing at the tips. But as you, you look at it and you get a good idea of what you got. So branch structure-wise, you got a tree that goes out that way and a tree that goes up that way. And you can decide what you want. Now, I already know what I want. I want this thing to drop aerial roots. I want this thing to drop aerial roots from here, from here. I want this thing to look like the thick banyan forest that looks really tropical. So in order to do that, I want to bring it closer um, to that cut line to the soil because I really want it to grow some more roots out that I can later on work with and possibly raise it up out of the then raise it out of the soil to kind of get that nice buttress but until then I got to work with what I got so now it's time to take it out of the pot get rid of the soil and rake it out and then check out the roots which I will then not show you because that is boring <laughs> for the most part um because I'm sure you guys can find a lot of this on, like, say, Nigel Saunders. You can watch him do it. And it's it's therapeutic because he's like the Bob Ross of bonsai. So you guys can really <laughs> get into that. Um, but I am going to pan forward and show you what I have left and what I, what I am left with and what I'm going to do. All right. So I've got the roots raked out. And I want to show you what I mean as radial. So I put it on a piece of white cardboard so you kind of get an idea of what I mean obviously I mean a lot of you probably know but you just want to cut it so it is kind of circular and then when you look at the plant it looks kind of flat the bottom's flat the roots go out radially then when you set it in a pot which this pot I chose for uh, this plant which is one of Steve's pots a nice little round pot but it has some depth to it because I really want to get this thing growing so when I do set it in there it kind of fits. I mean, there's some other roots I'll trim off, but it fits and it'll allow for some root growth. It'll grow out a canopy and it'll look really nice uh, as it keeps growing and training into what it eventually will become. So now I'm just going to fill it up with, with bone size soil. Um, bone size soil, I think I've done videos on that before. Uh, I don't like to repeat myself, but it's pretty much three ingredients. If you really want to be simple about it, if you want to do it yourself, it's peat moss, perlite, and what they call turfus, which you can get at a uh, um, automotive store. It's basically a clay substance. It looks like cat litter. 
the only thing I really suggest you guys do is just get a cheap sifter, sift out the fine particles, don't throw them away, keep the fine particles, put them in your garden or use them for bonsais or bonsais that have uh, finer roots or seedling types or uh, just um, what they call the, the small ones, shohin and mamate style. But this one is going to get potted up and then I'll show you what it looks like when we're all done. All right, so here we are left with the finished product. So it's in one of Steve's pots, which I think does complement the color of the leaves of the Schifflera. I've added some moss that I have wildly growing in that terrarium over there. And uh, I noticed that if you look, there's a lot of large particles in my mix. It's because what I did was for my bone size, I have leftover orchid bark that I wasn't using for the orchids. And I put it, uh, some kind of fur bark, I've added it to it. Um, the reason why I can get away with larger particles in this room is because the humidity is pretty high. So they don't dry out as fast unless they are like this monstrosity here that woke up and is drinking water every day and probably having roots come out the bottom of the pot. So it's probably up, that one's up for a repot. Um, but getting back to this, um, I added a little moss around the cut line that was still sticking up a little bit out of the soil, but with the moss adds more humidity, which flaras will drop aerial roots to that humidity. And what I'm hoping is that it will seek out that moisture in the moss and put roots in the moss, then down into the mix. And eventually that cut line will kind of go away and it'll have a nice radial pattern of roots. Um, I did have to remove more roots to get it in this pot. It had a, um, from the aerial, uh, the uh, air, air layering, it had a little bit of a stump at the bottom that wasn't going to allow it to go down in the pot. I had to cut that off. But for some reason, there was a lot of roots growing out of that stump. So it lost more roots than I would care to. But I feel with Schifleras, they are very tough, very hardy. And given the good care that I give it, it will bounce back, uh, put out new leaves, and look great. And uh, hopefully in the future, I can show you an update and show you how it's looking and how it's doing. Now, other than that, uh, that's all I want to show for you guys this time. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. And as always, keep growing some shit.